<clears throat> I have a reorganization meeting checklist. I'll be going down. Uh, the first item is to make sure that all board members elected at the current town meeting day are sworn in. Did everybody get sworn in? Sworn in. Well, actually, there were only two positions. Uh, yes. right. Two harder yes. positions. Did you get sworn in? Yes, you did. Very good. Um, Patrick uh, Kane is in Switzerland. He, uh, uh, not sure whether or not he made it to the board. He had a few people write in his name, and I tried uh, contacting Alberta Miller today. Uh, she wasn't available, so I will hear for certain whether or not uh, Patrick passed the muster. Um, all right, so you've uh, elected the chair. And how about uh, nominations for vice chairperson? Vice chairperson. I second it. There will be no discussion. Andrew, <laughs> Andrew, Andrew, there's no objection then by unanimous. Cast one ballot. Consent. We we'll close nominations and there's a motion to cast uh, one ballot for Andrew. Vice <laughs> Chair. <laughs> All those approve. Uh, who approve the motion to cast one ballot for Andrew for vice chairperson, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And Andrew is elected. The third uh, position to be elected is the clerk. Are there nominations for clerk? I nominate Amy Rosenthal. I second it. Amy Rosenthal is nominated and seconded. Any more nominations? Hearing none, then. Without objection, by unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations. And is there uh, a motion uh, with respect to the election of the clerk? Does somebody want to suggest casting one ballot? In other sure. <laughs> okay. Any discussion? Uh, hearing none, let's proceed to the uh, vote. All those in favor of Amy Rosenthal to be clerk of the Hazen Board, please say aye. All those opposed? And Amy is elected. And now the, the next item on the checklist is the uh, supervisory union board representatives, if necessary. I don't think it's necessary because none of us were up for election, so there's no vacancies. All right. And there's some committee work uh, that we can discuss later. Some operational uh, decisions, regular board meeting schedule. Um, what, what's your pleasure with regard to the regular board meeting schedule? We've got executive session. Are we moving the executive session? Is there anybody? The uh, no, we just have to, every year we have to decide when our regular meeting is. And so there's a, a suggestion in the form of a motion, I guess, to keep it as it is. Is there uh, second. a second? And any other suggestions? May I ask what it is at the moment? Is it second Monday? First, first Monday? Second, first Monday? second Monday. Because it used to be like third Monday and then it changed without me getting a notice. And so I just show up whenever it says on the website. But cool, first Monday. Thank you. Uh, second sorry. Monday. Second Monday, sorry. Wow. Second Monday. All those in favor of the uh, second Monday to be the regular meeting date? monthly. Um, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it on the second Monday. It's established. Uh, I'm going to put off this uh, next item, which is to schedule an annual board work session or retreat. We can deal with that later. Uh, to designate places for posting meeting agendas. It's the next item. Post office. Uh, town clerk's office, post office, 
and the Hardwick and Woodbury Elementary School and Library are the places that were designated last year. Uh, what is your pleasure? Should we keep the same? The town clerk's office is all, th all three of them? Yes. Okay. Town clerk's office is in uh, Greensboro, uh, Hardwick, Woodbury, uh, and post offices. And the uh, school, school uh, posters, uh, either at the library or wherever else the notices are fixed at the school. Uh, what's your pleasure? Do you want to keep those uh, same arrangements? Yes, sir. All right. Any more discussion on that? All those who want to keep the uh, same uh, designated places for posting meeting agendas, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And they will remain the same. The next item is to agree or not on the use of Robert's Rules of Order for Small Boards. Uh, that's what we presently use to govern the process at this meeting. But what's your pleasure with respect to using uh, Robert's Rules uh, for Small Boards? So moved. There's a motion uh, to adopt Robert's Rules for Small Boards uh, as the rules of uh, procedure for these meetings. Is there a second? I second. Any more discussion? Any more discussion? Uh, hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of uh, agreeing to use Robert's rules for small boards to run these, uh, to govern these meetings, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And we've adopted Robert's rules for small boards. And now, the Code of Ethics. Did you give me, did you just give me a bunch of those? I passed them out. Before. You did, okay. All right. Um, these are the, uh, I believe, the same Code of Ethics we adopted last year. Does anybody, uh, well, let, let's move it first. Um, What's your uh, pleasure with respect to these uh, <coughs> code of ethics to uh, govern the board members? I move we continue to use the recommended uh, code of ethics from the Vermont School Boards Association. Okay, happily, since we've just adopted Robert's Rules for Small Boards, we don't need a second. Need a second. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Any more discussion about that? Uh, hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of adopting, readopting, I should say, uh, this code of ethics, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And the code of ethics is passed. Yes, please sign the The uh, next item is to designate a newspaper for uh, notices required uh, for publication. I think last year uh, we designated the Hardwood Gazette to be that newspaper. What is your pleasure with respect to designating a newspaper for printed notices for board business? There's a motion to continue with the Hardwick Gazette to be the designated newspaper. Uh, any more discussion on that? Uh, if not, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of designating the Harvard Gazette as the uh, newspaper of record for posting notices, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And the Harvard Gazette is so designated. Um, new this year. Under the process approved at the 2018 VSBA annual meeting, each school district has the ability to cast one vote to ratify the agreement reached by the statewide health care bargaining commission. Please be sure to add appointment of the school district's voting delegate for statewide health insurance to the first meeting at the first meeting of your board as a ratification process requires each school district to notify the VSBA of the name, telephone number, and email address of its uh, voting delegate by April 1. What is your pleasure with respect to appointing? So I think that might be the SU, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, here it says SU slash SD. Yeah, so it's probably the SU. Probably the SU, okay. 
I forget I said that. There are other items here um, that I think, uh, in the interest of, of time and hearing from the parents uh, that are here, uh, we could put off uh, till a subsequent meeting. Uh, those items are to identify communications practices, uh, the subject of board development, to discuss board development opportunities and attendance, and to discuss local and statewide education advocacy responsibilities. Um, most of you have been here for a couple of years and are fully familiar with that. So uh, if there's no objection, I'll just pass over those items and uh, we'll get down with the rest of the meeting. All right. Are there any amendments uh, to the agenda proposed tonight? Amendments to the agenda. Uh, one might be uh, to discuss the uh, proposed trip to uh, Ireland this year. If there's no objection, we'll add that to the agenda and we'll put it um, right after uh, public comment. Also, maybe move at least one executive session. Uh, I see. Um, I see one executive session. Is there so we'll, we'll actually need two. Um, one, one can remain where it is, and the other uh, we need to move to the top. All right. So we have one executive session for personnel, and that can stay where it is. Yeah. And we need uh, another up top. Yeah. The okay. other um, involving uh, a family. Right. A student matter, a confidential student matter, is that right? All right. Any other uh, amendments to the agenda? Any other amendments to the agenda? All right. Uh, hearing none. So, oh. uh, um, I'm, we've invited Ali Lahara to present on the cel a valedictorian salutatorian. I was going to just put that in my section, but if you want to put that on the agenda as a item in and of itself. As uh, an uh, action item or a discussion item? I think a discussion think item, is that correct? It's an action item, I believe. Right? Action item. We, we want the board to yeah. support the idea. All right. Why don't we make it a uh, subsection of the uh, principal's incidental report? <coughs> All right, any other amendments to the agenda this evening? Any other amendments to the agenda? All right, before we hear from the, uh, all those present uh, who want to comment on the Ireland trip, let's uh, turn to the uh, minutes of February 10, 2020. Uh, what is your pleasure with respect to those minutes? Will they be accepted? So uh, the question is, will we include Ali in? Uh, we'll mm -hmm. Are you suggesting we should amend the uh, minutes to uh, to include Ollie's name? To include Ollie's name. <laughs> you were you were left out of the minutes from last time. No, you didn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> there was no evidence. Well, make sure that you exist. I also just think that that's what the minutes. Public comment here that doesn't have to do with Ireland. So yes. We'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, are there any other suggestions uh, for amendments to the uh, minutes of February 10, 2020? We have one suggestion to include uh, Ali as being present. Poor Ali. Any other? Well, she says others in attendance. Your name is in that. So do we need to like officiate Ollie being a rep to, for in order for them to well, actually be included? Yeah, something that probably needs to be at some point. I don't know if you want to do it. How do, do you vote on that or like, because I just showed up. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, who told you to come here? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually elected by the state body of Hazel. Ah, no, there's, so, there's this some This is a scalawag here, so. And how, uh, Ollie, how did you get here? Uh, Audrey brought me. <laughs> so. I see. Um. Yeah, chain migration, so. All right, and... <laughs> Which is tradition, we've had sibling, sibling. Exactly, yes, and I'm not the only one. There is precedent here, so, you know. 
Good so, so Ali is here because the the other representative is now in Senegal. Right? Yes, and the, and there hadn't been a junior class representative either this year. So I, I felt like here's someone I can drag quickly and easily <laughs> without complaint. So all right. Do you, so the question is, do you guys have to vote on that or not? Well, is that something that needs to happen? Uh, the the students selected you. Yes. So that's probably a, a good practice to uh, have the students uh, elect uh, the student representative. The only thing is that the junior class never, there was no election for a replacement. Um, and that was something that, what, how, I, how I'd seen it was that the junior class was going to elect someone from, within their grade from, like the junior class was going to elect someone from their grade themselves, not the whole school. Um, and there just hadn't been another election on it. Um, and considering that I'm going away this year and they usually, or they're trying to hold elections in the springtime, that means that there would have been no student with any understanding about how the school board runs at a school board meeting by themselves. And I think that would also have been a very stressful situation for a student involved. So I, and I don't know how to go along setting up um, an election with the junior class, especially because right now their big focus is prom. And I don't, like, I don't know yeah. how their classes. The student council uh, managed that election last time around. Yeah. Does my memory serve? Me? Yeah. And I had gone to student council at the beginning of the year and informed them you have to choose a junior representative, either the junior class elects it themselves or someone appoints them, I don't know. Um, and I had never heard anything. Would, and, and would Ollie be a, a viable candidate, an eligible candidate to represent the uh, junior class? I believe so. I like to think so. Okay. <laughs> Good. Well, let me suggest this. I, I think it, it would be appropriate, anyway, for the board to uh, invite uh, Ollie to, to sit in as a, a provisional member, but we, we do need yes, do, do something from yeah. the students to Absolutely. tell us who the student representative is. I can mean, we count on you to remind them to, uh, or the student council to? I can remind them. <laughs> I, that is to the extent of my ability, however. and. Um, I guess that's all we can ask. Okay. So if I remember this correctly, there was not anyone who stepped forward when we did this originally. To so no one wanted to in the first place. It's a highly coveted position. <laughs> <laughs> Too many applicants can choose. And I will say that the year I was elected was the first time they had had that, so that the school board representative was an elected position. That was the first time that had happened. Um, and there because the elections have not been consistent in the past couple of years, it was <clears throat> like it's just something that has been changing a lot recently. And I, I don't know. All right, I'd I rather have a junior person, a junior I, representative now than I would, never. I, I would agree with you on that. So I think the board can. I would suggest that we can handle it this way. We can uh, invite uh, Ali to uh, our meetings as a provisional student representative until we're instructed differently. Uh, by the student council, uh, or however uh, the student representative is uh, chosen. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and w w somebody, uh, Michael, so moved. Thank you. Any more discussion on that subject? Any more discussion? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. Uh, all those in favor of. Uh, uh, appointing uh, uh, Ali as the uh, provisional uh, student rep for the juniors uh, until we're instructed otherwise by the students. Uh, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, uh, you're official, I guess, as far as, as, far as it goes. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Uh, now, uh, let's, uh, let's go to the I Ireland <coughs> trip, the uh, amendment to the uh, agenda, one of them is to talk about the uh, Ireland trip. You may have heard in the news of a worldwide outbreak of a flu-like uh, virus, and it may have some impact uh, on the planned trip to Ireland by the students uh, this year. Um, Talon, May I just ask you to kick off the discussion and then and everybody else can weigh in? Can um, yeah, uh, we're scheduled to go the 29th of May through June 6th. Um, and we have this outbreak. And so the concerns are the students' uh, welfare, the welfare of our community. 
um, and also the financial ramifications of having to choose to cancel uh, the trip. So families have about a thousand dollars invested that's un non-refundable right now. Um, that if we were to, if you as uh, a board were to s decide to cancel the, the trip, um, it's questionable if we could give the refunds to the, the families. Um, there was some discussion prior to this meeting about possibly um, looking to postpone uh, the trip. That if the air if the airlines are willing to um, just move the flights, the the problem with that is our uh, our wonderful seniors would likely not be able to join us on that endeavor. Um, this is a tricky one. Um, yeah, I think that's the. My granddaughter's school in Southern Connecticut, they decided to cancel a school trip for a week, for a month earlier than that. And because they canceled, there was no refund. Uh, they got a 25% refund in this case. If the company had canceled, they'd have gotten it all back. So, and you, you alluded to, to this as, a, as something that people were out. That was, I'm just, I had that discussion with my granddaughter, my 17-year-old granddaughter last evening. So, I, I'm aware that this is a heavy price that you're all considering. That's helpful. Thank you. That's I'm not sure it's helpful. helpful but I like the idea of, uh, and I do note that many, if not most, of the international air carriers are waiving the fee on changing tickets and everything currently. I don't know that the one you've contracted with through the company is doing that, but I know that that is something that a number of the airlines are doing. Helen, well, I heard there was a March 18th deadline, maybe, where um, you could be reimbursed? No. Okay. The, the agency has... Um, Percentages of the the total, but the air the airfare at this point is not refundable, which is which is the uh, eight hundred fifty of the thousand dollar cost. The other the other part of that expense has been is that like the hostels and the the um, some of the lodging for the the kids. So that's information I have from the agency. Um, is it correct to say then that? Um, while uh, perhaps I haven't read this, but now I hear that some of the airlines are permitting uh, purchasers to postpone the trip. Um, do we have enough uh, information about whether we can postpone the trip, and is there is there a hard deadline that, that you need? No, I don't. I don't um... to make that decision. I, I don't have enough information myself. Um, I, we had a meeting, the parents uh, and the kids and I had a meeting prior to the board meeting tonight and we were discussing this and um, I called the agent in the middle of the meeting and, and asked them the question, could we postpone this? Um, and the, the best that they could give me is they could call the airline, because this is contingent on the airline, they can call the airline tomorrow um, and give me more information. Um, and that's the best I can do at this point. Okay. And the, might it be something we can uh, act on at the next regular uh, board meeting if you get enough information? I think so. Right? I think that's, so the next board meeting is... Uh, April. April. Yeah, it's, get, it's getting kind of close. My concern yeah. would be, are there any other um, fees that you need to pay between now and then? Good, good question. The, um, as a part of this conversation, the, the, we have payment, a payment schedule with them. Um, and the hard, the hard deadline for our school paying the cost of the trip in full is May 1st. Um, and they, they are willing to waive those payments and, and take the payment in full for the rest of the trip at that last date. So that is, um, I think I'm saying that clearly. So essentially we wouldn't have to pay any further unless we decided to move forward with that. Um, then we'd have to pay in full. It's one sum. Would we risk losing more, though, 
with like getting more money back, like the earlier we cancel, mm -hmm. does that number drop? It? No, it wouldn't. It's not going to change. The only thing, the only thing that we I, I, that we can't refund at this point is the yeah. airfare, yeah. the airfare and the hostels. If and, I, and you, how many seniors are in this group? Four. Four. Is there the potential that if you delay, if you postpone, that you could add four more students and drop those four at no penalty, considering the you know the the vagaries of, of this type Absolutely. of thing? That's something that if you can get to the agent before he talks to the airlines, it might be nice to, to learn that. Too. Because if, if you put it off till next year, for instance, yeah. um, if it was if it was possible, I mean, there's a, there's a possible way to recoup some of that by having new people participate. It's just that way we can refund the seniors as well. Yeah, that would allow you to try to raise the money from four more students who, who joined, if that's possible. And, Again, that's a question that I don't think any of us in this room can answer. Talent, is there a scenario in which the decision will be made for you? Sorry, I don't. Is there a scenario in which the decision will be made for you? Like if the travel agency if just cancels it? If there's a travel ban, or, or if the agency, if the agency cancels, or if you, the school board, decides, or. Right, so what you're really trying, are you asking us to make a decision? Or are you? I think, well, I would recommend, and, and not just me, but the parents and the kids and I in, the, in our discussion, um, would, I guess I'd recommend us looking at the possibility of postponement. I feel like we, we don't have all the facts right now from, mm -hmm. from the travel agency. And, and everyone raised really great questions tonight um, about it. And I, I feel like we could have more information as soon as tomorrow, um, which might be helpful in making this decision. Um, that's my, so I, I think if we can wait to the next board meeting to make that decision, I, I don't think we're going to be in a different position. So, that makes sense. so given what I have been checking in with um, other superintendents regularly, the Department of Health, the Agency of Education. Um, we actually just had um, an update on Friday, a webinar. We were able to ask, ask some questions. Um, there are other schools that are canceling. I know uh, Lamoille's canceling their Canada trip at the end of May. Um, I think at this point, I'd feel more comfortable saying, you know, we're just postponed indefinitely until we find out that information. But at this point, I'd consider um, well, that's, that's what I consider. I think, I think we have enough information to to postpone the trip at this point. I'd be uncomfortable waiting for the next board meeting to, to make a decision. Is, is it possible that, depending on the information you get from the airline and the agent, is it possible that if a decision needs to be made, that we could somehow have a phone-in ballot or something like that to endorse a certain policy prior to the next meeting, but that would pass muster legally. We well, can. The decision doesn't need to be made by the board. Okay. It's, okay. It doesn't have to. Okay. Well, I, I, make, can you make that decision? Yeah. Okay. So my question would be, what would be the criteria upon which we would make a decision one way or the other? I, that to me, it's like let's reverse engineer it. What would be the scenario that we would say absolutely? So if the schools all over Vermont get closed because of the virus, that seems like an automatic. That's we don't we don't do it and we postpone it. But if the schools don't, then what's the criteria? Well, like I said, I, I feel uncomfortable running a trip to Ireland when you know folks next door to us have canceled a trip to Canada. Um, other schools are canceling trips. Um, I mean, I can do more research on that, but um, I'd hate to put kids at risk when, and adults for that matter, when, you know, the rest of the state is making decisions. 
maybe this is a good time uh, to hear from the parents who want to weigh in on this. Um, <clears throat> I don't know who to, who or to ask for. Or students. Yeah. We're both here. Um, Carter's a student. Why don't we start with you and go down the road? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no pressure. That's right. He's good. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, there's how many cases are confirmed in Ireland? Uh, as of today, 21. 21. So, uh, we have no idea how those numbers could balloon up or get a lot worse. And um, one of my biggest concerns I've thought of is we have, uh, my mom's a physical therapist, and so she uh, is, works with a lot of different people, and the last thing I'd want is us to contract something or something like that and bring it back to our community, even though it's like, but it, it, for that um, case, there's already cases, there's like a case in Vermont already, so it might already come anyways. And the other thing that we could think about is um, that would also make mean that my mom would have to be out of work for 14 days after she got back. So like, there's a lot of different things we have to be thinking about. And those are just a few things that <coughs> I've heard about I just stole. <laughs> Good one. I feel that the situation is too unpredictable to move forward. I think that we need to seriously consider postponing. And hopefully we can get as much money, recoup as much money and refund the seniors. And I feel really sad for the seniors, but it's totally a situation that I feel has been taken out of our hands. Well, my feeling is if we wait any longer to make this decision, the big thing is right now, looks like most airlines are working with people and are willing to let you move your tickets. So we may be better off making a decision now and being able to still keep that airline ticket without losing the money, just moving the date. <coughs> I came to the meeting earlier gung-ho to go, and I feel like as we've talked about this, and my, I've evolved in my thinking. Uh, there's just too many variables, um, and from what if they get quarantined on the way back out, um, what if everything, you know, it just, there's too many variables. So um, I think postponing for a year would be a good, wise decision, and the quicker we do it, the better. Anybody else? As a parent who is chaperoning, I would rather postpone if possible and not lose double the money. Mm -hmm. And I mean, with working as much as I have to raise this money to go. So postponing if possible, I guess, to me, makes more sense than canceling and losing double. I just have a question, just to be clear, or so I understand, are you informing us you're postponing the trip, or are you asking us to postpone your trip? We weren't sure if we can move the, the, the flights, which is the bulk of, that, that, it, it sounds like. I, I think more we're asking to say, don't say that we can't go, we're saying, if anything, we're saying, postpone, don't cancel. Asking for is, yeah, let, let us get some more information more, before. Sorry, would you have more leverage with the airline if you said our board of, our, our yes. board said we can't go? Yeah, I doubt oh. it. No, I doubt okay. it. Doubtful. I, I did that on a dining club trip once, where because it was a school trip and there was a student who got <coughs> sick and couldn't go, they let me change the name on the ticket. Uh, you create, you put another student on and took that one off. Yep. Yes. And we didn't have to deal with the fees because it was a school trip. Yep. We okay. got to do that. Um, one thing to think about too is I noticed today there are a couple of countries now that are quarantining anyone coming into the country. Israel. Mm -hmm. And there are other countries that are considering doing that. <coughs> so it could even end up you fly to Ireland and you don't leave the airport for <laughs> four, two weeks. So. <laughs> 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 Is there anybody else uh, who's here tonight that wants to weigh in on the Ireland trip? I mean, so I'm a senior who is planning on going to Ireland. 
And as much as this bums me out, I totally understand it. And honestly, if my money went to Ollie or another one of my underclassmen friends, like I would be okay knowing that at least it went to a good, it would, like it went somewhere and it still got used. And I do believe that what we're, what the general idea is ask for postponement, not cancellation. Like let's figure this out. Let's actually get somewhere instead of losing money like that that seems more and even then like i would be disheartened if i you know got a small percent of the money versus someone else got all of it and could actually enjoy it even if it means i can't so in the discussions with the families did you get a sense that there was anybody who say no i think we should go anyway I, there wasn't in that sense, okay. Only someone who wasn't at the meeting, but she might have evolved in her thinking at this. Wasn't, oh, at you were the first, person. Yes. Okay. <laughs> at first, I'm like, well, you know, there are cases here, but, you know, when we get there, if there's a possibility of, of being quarantined, or it's like my mother has, um, she has a weakened immune system. So if I was to go and come back, and I had to be quarantined and have to stay at my sister's house for two weeks, then, you know, thinking about it, it would be kind of foolish. Yeah. It would be irresponsible on my part. Are there any more comments from parents or students about the uh, Ireland trip? Um, if not, I think if, if I can sum up, uh, it seems that the consensus is uh, <clears throat> that given the uncertainty of the situation, uh, the best decision now is to postpone the trip. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that's, that's a board decision, but if the administration uh, asked our position, uh, am I correct in saying that uh, the board would probably recommend postponing the trip? Yeah. Um, Okay, so I guess that's what we'll recommend, and um, I guess we'll all keep posted, right, Adam, on what's going on. Yep. You may have heard today that uh, the uh, St. Patrick's Day parade mm -hmm. in Dublin has been canceled because of this <laughs> concern. So the Irish are taking this quite seriously, it appears. St. <laughs> Patrick's Day canceled. I don't know. I don't know. Feel free to check in with me. Yeah. Yeah. Updates. Updates. So just before we move on from this issue, I think it's important to acknowledge the enormous amount of work that people have put into this. And so Talon and Leah have spearheaded this trip, put in an enormous amount of work. Many of the parents have been really active and fundraising has done a lot of work. The kids have been right out there. And so um, I just, we appreciate all the work that you've put into this. And this is a, a very unfortunate circumstance. And I think that this community will rally around trying to make this trip be even bigger and better um, at the time when we can do it safely. So thank you for all your hard work. Yes, absolutely. Well, if there's no further discussion on this, uh, thank you for coming and filling us in. Uh, much appreciated. Um, the next item uh, on the agenda, I know uh, we, have, we have Lucas here, his public uh, comment. And I wonder if at public comment the board just sits and, and listens, but I, I wonder if the board wants to elevate this into a, a discussion item uh, for this meeting. What's your, what's your view? Uh, I'm not sure we can take any action in either, uh, either direction, but we do want to hear from uh, Lucas. Um, so why don't we invite Lucas uh, up and... Uh, Wherever you want. Oh, sorry. Gotcha. Lucas, we understand you received a rather prestigious award the other day. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. 
and um, because you're so uh, modest, uh, I'd like to mention that it was uh, you uh, won one of the Bernie Essay Awards, second place, I take it. And, and what was the subject of your essay? Um, the mental health crisis in schools. Um. And do you have, uh, uh, well, I guess that was a general subject. Do you have any observations about that uh, with respect to um, Hazen? Um, I wrote about um, the need for mental health screenings in schools, the normalization of mental health discussions, and overall better mental health services in schools. When you say normalization of uh, mental health discussions, what does that mean? I mean, so normalization of mental health discussions so that students don't have to be afraid of stereotypes or judgment when speaking about their mental health and speaking about where their mind's at. And I think there's such a negative stigma around it that people are afraid of harassment or judgment to even talk about their feelings. And uh, in your research, uh, did you uh, happen to uh, read anything about uh, how schools can create that atmosphere of, uh, to, uh, to make it safe uh, for students to uh, speak up and, and even seek out help to uh, talk about something extremely personal? Yeah, well, one of the things was um, I took health class this year and we had no unit on mental health, which I was surprised. I thought that that was, I didn't even realize it until after the class was over. I thought, wow, we didn't talk about, you know, mental health, suicide prevention, depression, anxiety, or any of those things at all. And it's such a common thing that everybody, everybody experiences some sort of, I don't want to say that, everybody, obviously not everybody's depressed, but everybody, even if they don't experience it themselves, everybody knows somebody that experiences um, side effects of negative mental health. And so one of, um, I didn't write this in my essay, but one of those things is, or maybe I did, but um, it should definitely at least be a unit in a health class that you take if a health class is mandatory to graduate. Mm -hmm. Um, interesting. Were there other recommendations you made? Um, again, I'm um, very pushing for um, annual mental health screenings in schools to see where people are at and um, to, for students to even see where they're at because sometimes they don't even realize <coughs> how bad it is until they do something like a screening, you know. Obviously, enough mental health professionals on campus, which I know is a very hard thing to obtain. But, and I know that our um, counselors are swamped constantly, and it's not their fault. Um, I wonder, David, if you have any uh, observations about that uh, from your perspective as principal, uh, how that issue has uh, come up and, and has been dealt with at the school. Yeah, I think Lucas is spot on with every bit of this uh, observations and insight that he's had about this. Um, and um, we're looking forward to a, a few more resources. I think the AWARE grant has some identified and, and we talked about this. Um, but there are some resources that are coming down the pike that are going to help with some of this. But um, I agree 100% that our attention to um, mental issue, health issues of our students, and I'm appalled to learn that there was no unit about mental health in our health curriculum, something I didn't know. Um, seems really critical. We figure that piece out. So. Um, I really appreciate your uh, your insights and your sharing with the school. The
concerns that you've had. It's awesome. Whitaker, uh, are you a junior or senior? Sophomore. Sophomore, yeah. even better. So hopefully uh, you'll be around for a little while to keep your finger on the pulse here, as it were. Um, is there anything else uh, from your uh, essay, or even not from your essay, that you would uh, like to share with the board about um, this topic? I knew that one of the biggest issues in not being able to have things like screenings was money, and without telling anyone, I started to go fund me and ended up raising a little over a thousand dollars, and then I found out that it had to be approved by the school board first. So right, now, <laughs> right now I have a slightly large amount of money in a GoFundMe that will be refunded within the next couple of weeks if it's not withdrawn. And I can't withdraw it, and I don't want to withdraw it, so that's an issue. That's Ed, Ed, do you have any, any plans on, on how the money would be spent? I was originally thinking mental health screenings, and then I found out about the grant and possible mental health screenings without the need of fundraising, and I had a meeting with Judith and Ms. Pfeffer, and we spoke about possible other things I could go towards. We talked about possibly having, um, Judith was talking about some sort of club that um, is basically a safe space for people. We talked about, um, I mean, again, there's, um, Pro, um, programs that can be bought that are like curriculum for mental health and suicide awareness and they are kind of expensive so and it's depending on like oh is it a curriculum that curriculum that we want for a health class or is it something that we want to do like school-wide there's like a in some programs there's a difference between middle school and high school and Hazen is so you know I just I, in the fundraiser, it said that it's supposed to go towards the mental health department, which I know we don't really have a mental health department. So I was thinking that a, a check made out to Judith to use for the school, or Judith and her co-worker, I don't know her okay. name. Megan. Yes, her. Um, and we could discuss a way to use it in a, pos in a positive way towards mental health resources. So um, it sounds like uh, you've spent a considerable amount of time <clears throat> trying to think about where to direct this money with the news that the AWARE grant uh, came in. Um, so uh, we're very interested in, in where the money will ultimately go. I think I can speak for the board uh, in that respect. Um, uh, and I can't imagine why the board would um, disapprove of this effort. But uh, uh, if we take a straw poll right now, with the heads nodding, I see that uh, this will not be disapproved, uh, probably approved. But uh, I think we should uh, do that um, when we hear about uh, how you finally figure out how to spend the money and perhaps you know whatever contribution the board can make uh, to that uh, process, if if we can help, we'd, we'd certainly like to hear from you how to do that. Um, so I'll just leave you with the uh, thought that uh, this is great what you're doing. It looks like the board approves, and uh, it also looks like you're. Uh, bending every effort to figure out how to spend the money the best way. And uh, bravo uh, for winning the prize and continuing to work on this after you have won that prize. And thank you for coming up uh, tonight. We'd like to invite you back uh, yes. when you have uh, a firmer idea of uh, what to do with the money and, and if you need the board's uh, assistance in any way. Thank you very much. Any questions for uh, Lucas while we have him as a captive audience? Some question about Lucas. Uh, shoot me an email and we'll figure out how John Smith, our Thank CFO, you. can get the money out. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it won't. I don't know when it'll be refunded, but donations, um, small donations, still have been coming in, and their donations will be paused on March 18th if withdrawals aren't set up by then. Okay, so just um, yeah, get in touch with me. And figure that out. Thank you. Uh, I understand that that we have that the uh, SU is developing a uh, fundraising uh, policy. Yes, I think, uh, we'll, we'll be looking at it next Monday. All right, very good. So it's a little premature for the board uh, to do anything about it, but this is a great situation uh, to tackle this issue. Yeah, great example of learner agency. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. That's what we're about. Lucas, thank you very much. Any any other questions for Lucas? Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very so much. much. Oh, yeah, it's right. something I really want to do. So. There you go. Thank you. Thanks, Lucas. You can stay and hang out. We're going to be here for another two hours. Um, <laughs> That's optimistic, Audrey. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll take the opportunity to uh, ask if there is any other public comment for this meeting. Any other public comment for this meeting? Uh, if not, uh, I think the next added agenda item is an executive session for a student matter. And if somebody wants to uh, make the appropriate motion and to invite Allie on this, or, or Adam, or David, which of the administration uh, do we need in on this, if anybody? Uh, David, me. Adam and David, invited. Uh, anybody else? I think so. Is there a motion to go into executive session? to so discuss a student matter is moved. So we'll do that, and we'll ask uh, the rest of you to excuse us while we uh, speak about this accommodation. Uh, all right, we're out of the executive session, back on the record at uh, 18 minutes past 8. Um, the next item uh, on the uh, agenda is the uh, principal's incidental report, which you have uh, in the uh, electronic record, uh, at least anyway. I hope you've had a chance to read it. And um, there is uh, the subject of uh, what to do about the tradition of the valedictorian and salutatorian. And we'll turn it over to uh, David to talk more about that issue. Yeah, so um, we talked about this at some point a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. It was last year at some point, and we gave you guys kind of a survey that we had conducted about what other schools are doing. Um, I think we're stuck in a age-old tradition here that has ceased to serve us in um, beneficial ways as we move into the modern world. And I think we're thinking about trying to do something a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Allie who's graciously been waiting for a long time to get this conversation in. And uh, she'll lay some of it out for you, and then we'll send her on her, on her way. Um, so this idea came, I think it was last year. I'm on a list serve with the other directors of guidance in, in the state, um, and we share information. And um, one of the schools was phasing out their, their valedictorian and salutatorian. Um, and a couple months later, I just I did a survey um, of what schools in Vermont still had had this process, and 11 schools responded, and, and nine of them either were in the process of dropping the valedictorian and salutatorian awards, or um, have had already dropped it. Um, and the reason why I was pulled in this direction is really, to me, it doesn't really fit the proficiency-based grading model. I mean, you can't really have two students who are the most proficient or more proficient than others. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't provide a lot of equity when our students have a variety of abilities um, and needs and to, to really focus on two students when we have a lot of students who work really hard in our school. It just didn't really seemed like it made a lot of sense um, and so I we were proposing to phase this award these awards out 
um, and re and to introduce the Latin honors system. So the um, the summa cum laude, magna cum laude, um, cum laude, and a lot of the six of the nine schools who did not have the valedictorian or salutatorian had this system. Um, and for students who are looking to go on to college, that is a very, very common on the award system, honor system. Um, so it, it would be trading a well-known award to for another. Um, and that way we could incorporate, incorporate a lot more of our students. Um, one of the schools I thought was really interesting, BFA, they have a graduation with distinction and they and so students can get their diploma but with a distinction in the arts or a distinction in STEM. Um, and so thinking of our students who get to go out in the community a lot and have been working on internships and um, we have a way, if we wanted to consider that, we have a way of um, awarding or giving, um, giving everyone a little piece of recognition as well. Um, and so in the, in the sheet that I made, there was, uh, there's a quote from the Great Schools Partnership, and I think that really said my, my beliefs and why, we, why it would be best for the school to move, to move forward. Um, we don't do class ranking, and that's also a very common um, piece. Uh, so when we have students that apply to college in most applications, it says, are you within the top 10%, top 5%? We don't do that either, um, and that's been in place before I, before I came here. Um, yeah, and, so we, and we were thinking of doing this visa with our current sophomore class, so our, our current sophomore class would, would be the first year to graduate with the Latin honor, honor system, but that just so that our student body and community would have time to adjust to that. Um, and we were also thinking of communicating this sooner rather than later so that our community can understand the changes. No, it's very articulate. Um, the, the other thing that I just wanted to add was that we often find ourselves in really difficult positions of, and as we increase multiple pathways so that kids' experience in high school is looking different from one another, we have these really difficult situations that we find ourselves in where someone's education who has looked completely different from another person's education are sort of um, neck and neck for this distinction. And because we can only give two, um, we're very limited in this, whereas the Latin system allows us a much broad, broader base. We can honor a lot more students. And instead of comparing students to students, you're comparing right. students to the standard. Absolutely. That's right. what In their ability. Is based on. Yeah. Right. So. Um, but it's not a medal for participation. No. No, <laughs> no I mean, right. so we're talking it's about some cum laude or summa cum laude or cum laude. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, commonly, it's a common system in the in academia. The yeah. <laughs> Andrew, you graduated from UVM in 1992? Yeah. And it's pretty amazing. Clark <laughs> can cite that fact. Uh, it, it's easy because he's uh, four years younger than one of my sons. So okay. But my son older, but that's fine. <laughs> four years young, older than, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you graduated, there were summa magna and cum laude graduates. I know that what, I was on the board at UVM and people got into Phi Beta Kappa, but they made distinctions because there would be some colleges that a large percentage of the students had a GPA here and other colleges where the GPA was here and so they said well we're not going to make sure have everybody who's in Phi Beta Kappa come from the School of Physical Therapy for instance. So there there was some, it wasn't strictly based on GPA, there were, they were trying to say a certain percentage is eligible and then they still had to cut the difference. That makes a lot of yeah. sense now. Yeah. I didn't just, yeah. 
I must have been in that percentile. <laughs> I, I'm sure. You were an uber sumo. <laughs> she just called you an uber sumo. Uber sumo. With this, words fail. Uh, um, the system where we have t these two <laughs> top highest honors, it often. It, it pits students against each other who should be really allies and collaborating and leaders in the community and you know sometimes this gets silly and especially it, because the stuff it can be predicted from the time you're in seventh grade like within students where it's like oh you know like that person's going to be like valedictorian in your grade and like you're immediately just like well then why do i even try right. like that's my experience so and the difference between in one of my years here, the difference between number three and number two is point zero something, and it's just, you know, that's between, yeah, it's it's so close, and to me, we should be recognizing as many students as we can if they, you know, fit yeah. within those constructs. There was a high school in California that had 18 valedictorians. <sighs> that's how they were. How we many? had one year, we had two valedictorians, and they were that far apart. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and looking at scholarships for college, there it's it's you know within a top percentage. It's not really you know that that title of valedictorian or salutatorian really wouldn't help anyone get that much farther ahead. It's really the top of the class and based on rigor and um, extracurriculars and things like that. Should we vote? <laughs> oh, do this here. Is there, there any other comment or observation from the board? Um, I think I think what you're you're asking us to do is to move toward uh, a more uh, to a system that reflects proficiency rather than <coughs> ranking, which tells you very little about a student. So. Um, we can do that, or, or do you need like specific uh, recommendation from the board to ditch the uh, solitarian and valedictorian over the side and, and recommend the, the Latinate system? What is it do you seek from the board? I think we seek a uh, green light to move forward with this plan that we've presented tonight. I want to vote. Um, I'm still a little bit confused what the distinction between the three of them are, mm -hmm. and if it's because um, it's unlike that there'd be like one person for each one because then that would just be replacing a, a two system with That's a three right. system. Right. So what are, what are the distinctions between each That's you know, level? A question. So depending on the school, you can do. Some schools have. I'm just making up numbers right now, but between a 3.7 GPA and a 4.0 GPA. If you get one of those, like somewhere within that, then you would get the summa cum laude. If you get 3.4 to a 3.7, you get the magna cum laude. So it is um, it is an honor that you get if you meet a certain GPA criteria. It could also be within a certain percentage of a, a school, but it's usually more um, GPA based because that's something that Again, you're not competing against your peers. You're competing against yourself, really, and it's your it's your work. And ethic. so, like as many kids as possible mm -hmm. would be getting. That's yeah. you could have the entire class be summa cum laude, depending that's on. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is is there any uh, further discussion on this matter from the board or comment? I think it's a good plan. Uh, if not, um, let's. Uh, is somebody uh, willing to pose? Yes, Michael. Oh, you want me to finish saying that? <laughs> and then you're going to say, so moved. I know. So does. I'll move it. I'll move it. We endorse. Far be it for me to be a Robert's Rules of Order geek. <laughs> Can we actually, if this wasn't on our to make a decision about? Oh, that's true. Are we allowed to actually vote on no. it? If it was, no. We could put it on for next time. Do we have to vote on that? Well, it was, not, it was not on the agenda, but it was in the principal's uh, report. Right, but in terms of action items that we need approval for, it's not on our action. 
Okay. Isn't it's this something David can approve without it's the request? My question is, can he just go do it and inform us about yeah. it? Way and not take any action on it? Or is yeah. this a. Yeah, it yes. seems to me this is more of a, an administrative. Hit it, Dave! Under other business, we can cover my back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So okay. we can express um, an opinion. Full throated throw, full throw support. Or as Michael so aptly put it, an endorsement of this uh, course of action by the administration throw all of these decisions my way tonight. All of them? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so let me, um, this is, we can also, for a future update, the proficiency-based learning policy. I think we have a proficiency-based policy, right? Yes. So um, we can work on updating that as well. So, uh, well then let me ask, uh, not for uh, the a vote of binding action, but for uh, kind of a straw poll, does the uh, does the board uh, favor this uh, uh, move by the uh, administration, Michael? I'll say yes. I support it. But oh yes, definitely. Andrew. Yes. Thanks Amy. For bringing it forward. Yeah, it's a great idea. And what do the student representatives think? I think it's a great <laughs> idea. I, I wish know. it could be implemented <laughs> sooner. Yeah. No, because we're because we're both going to be. You know, summa cum laude. Ma magna. No, I but say no, magna. I'm not. So I mean, that's an interesting anyway. question because we're actually playing it fairly conservative by thinking we need to kind of grow it in. But uh, yeah. but I, I was bringing on us this year, and the seniors would be <laughs> kind of upset. But like, if more of that, like, they'd be kind of upset. I'd be kind of, I mean, this year has already been a lot. Like, I don't think anything could surprise me at this point. So, like, just saying, you could go to the seniors tomorrow and be like, yo, we're getting rid of Val Sal, and actually more of you are going to be recognized for your hard work throughout high school, and, like, I would be pretty stoked. What if we, what if this year, would it be uh, oh, too much to vote? Could we add in the Latin honor system? I mean, I think, that, that's, I think that that can also be a better way of phasing it in. Mm -hmm. So you still have huh. the Valsal recognitions, but then you also have like more on top of it. Because I'm also like idea. so on board with implementing this for next year because <laughs> again, like I, I think I there is a lot of either. Yeah. So. I know there is a lot of student recognition that seems to go unnoticed because it's only the top two, and those are the only two that get the kind of. Yeah. I think we're really concerned that we, we don't think it's a fair thing to sort of change the game while we're in the middle of it. And, but this idea of adding it in is a brilliant idea. Because I was also told from somewhere that the Valsal was being phased out and I thought it was going to end. So I thought it was going to continue for your class and it wasn't going to be implemented for my class. So I've already like prepared myself for this. So, I don't know. so <laughs> if we're thinking about adding it in, we could add it in this year, right? We're adding awards, we're not taking away. So it'll be like a bonus, right? I know. I think it's right. Some people could get both. Good deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I support right. it. Okay. Well, very, very well. The administration has uh, heard an earful, and yeah, <laughs> I'm certain More than an earful. They'll, they'll proceed accordingly, okay? Perfect. So, um, that's the uh, one of the parts of the uh, principal's uh, incident report. Are there any questions uh, for the principal on other aspects of the report or something you wanted to highlight? Yeah, I just think it's important. Thank you, Thank you uh, Thank to you. our director of guidance for staying late to get that. I promised her that was going to happen in the first <laughs> minutes of the meeting. First three hours. Right. Stay. Anyways, I just think um, it's important to acknowledge that um, we are uh, responding proactively to the crisis in our midst in the uh, COVID-19 coronavirus situation and have put that conversation at the center of our community with um, two student assemblies today where we discussed with our students how we can be proactive and not have to feel like helpless victims in the face of this and started practicing Hand washing. Uh, uh, no duck and roll. <laughs> duck and cover. Duck and cover. I'm old enough to remember. I do too. And I think um, I think this is a very serious 
situation on the horizon that is cool. going to perhaps require us to do some fast thinking on our feet about how we keep our communities safe. And um, we have the advantage, unlike other parts of the world, to have some heads up. And so um, that places a little bit of responsibility on us to try and see if the evolution of this might be a little bit different and less consequential on our population. So, um, so do you have a sense of the um, feeling in the school about that after the assemblies or any chatter? Um, like Ali chatter about how people are feeling about it? Yeah, Sam well, staff? Yeah, so what I'm hoping is that we um, we were able to um, put people's emotions about this in, in, in context. And my hope was that we were able to defray some of the anxiety around this. At you the thought same, you were able at, to do so? Because there's a lot of free-floating anxiety. About there's it. a lot of anxiety about it. Um, but I think that we put the we put it in the conversation today. We, we made it okay to start talking about it and to start recognizing um, the things that are important for us to be paying attention to, and we asked for each other's help in being successful at that. So that, that was kind of our, our goal today, mm -hmm. and I think um, it was important to establish that, I think. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think in 1918 they closed all the schools in Vermont for five weeks. And churches and all the institutions. And my father caught the flu in 1918 as an infant. It was young men who had the highest mortality in the Spanish flu. They would die within 36 hours. Whoa. Yeah. So in addition to the work we've been doing in the school, there's been work done at central office today with representatives from all of our schools to think about the bigger picture and to bring that back to us. Um, so, you know, none of us know where this is going at this point, but our eyes are opened and our hearts are tuned. So, David, are you communicating with parents? Yes, a communication went out to parents today as well. So can I ask just a favor, just in general, if something's going out to parents, could we be included in on that email too? Is there any reason Well, you certainly could be. I don't know technically how that happens because there's just, just another click on a box somewhere, but I don't know that the system has the school board addresses there. So I'd ask Dave to add board members to the alert system yeah. to their that respective schools. So that would be really cool. Right. It would be, because yeah. I used to get the phone calls. I don't get them anymore. Um, yeah, so I think we, we can if we can figure out that technically. Right now, I don't think the system allows for that. Well, it should be added. I, I already made your request. Oh, the oh. one that David sent out to parents today, I don't yeah. think the board yeah. it didn't come no. to my board and it no. Thank you. I mean, I will say that I hate the format in which those things come out. It's like an, a run-on sentence. None of my accentuating, you know, delineation of paragraphs or none of that is communicated through there. So it's kind of a, it's a tough form to communicate in, but it's the quickest and easiest to get things out. And well, it just would help us because if it's about something major yeah. and we don't know, the you parents know, start calling us. Yeah, we got the letter, and we know that's going on. Yeah. Um, one way or the other, I think it just is a policy. We should. Next thing's going out to parents. Yeah. The board should also see it. Yep. Absolutely on board with that. Thank you. So the, the only uh, connection to close there is to, is to make sure that the uh, technically. It, Mm -hmm. No, this goes out to the board too. Adam's right on it. He's on it. Just sent <laughs> So that's the only additional thing that I felt okay. important to emphasize tonight. The, re the rest is just there. What's that? Oh, 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 actually, yes. I'd be happy to help. Would. Okay. Good. So we have the um, meetings set with what we think we're going to do. So are you free in the daytime?
It depends on the day. Okay, so we need to talk. Send it to me, and if not, I'll let you know. Okay. Or just let me know. Anybody else who'd be interested if Brett can't do it? What are we talking about? We're talking about the associate principal position, the hiring committee. We, we I'd love to have the board. Depending on, I'd be interested depending on when that meeting happens. Right, so there are going to be probably three meetings that you would need to attend yeah. next Tuesday, Wednesday, I believe, from, from 12 to like 4, and then a follow up meeting on Monday. The sooner I had a confirmation of when the meetings were the better I'm able to. I just confirmed it for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> better right there. I'll have. Uh, it's um, two better calls. And that's going to be here. Yeah. Tuesday noon four. And you might be able to. I might be able to. Okay. What time Noon to four? Noon. From noon to four. On Tuesday. On Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And Wednesday. And then the following Monday. What time are the following Monday? Is uh, uh, noon to probably, that's the debrief. So it'll be, uh, we've put it from noon to three, but we might not need all that time. Yeah. In your office? Or? Uh, we'll figure out where we're going to be. Yeah. Yeah, you just Someone will throw that over the <laughs> Maybe this is for Adam as well, but <coughs> does the school have the technology to have virtual classrooms if the school were to close for five weeks? I can speak so to that. Four weeks? So I my... Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, I do answer because I'm not sure what... Okay. You, when you say virtual technology, are you talking about... Um, do Video kids have, or do kids learning, have learning instruments, management. or to be able to be home and be able to? So we spoke about that this morning. We had a um, a crisis meeting, and um, there's Google Classroom and Schoology that, that schools are using. But part of the issue is there's probably just under 50 percent of student families that don't have access to wireless. So yeah. we're yeah. we talked about other alternatives. I shared some guidance with principals. Um, so they're aware that they they're working, they should be working with their staff to start thinking about that, that possibility. But go ahead. I, I was just going to speak to like my um, because the AP exams are going to happen probably no matter what. Um, my AP US history teacher was just mentioned that we were going to take time out of our class schedule later this week to go over how to use Google Hangouts um, and to possibly get that not blocked by the school so that students can use that as well for my AP US History class. And it, like Schoology is also a very good um, resource for students, especially because you can have the assignments and comment with each other and talk to each other on there. But there is that, like, you cannot assume that all students have Wi-Fi at home and how do we, and how do you deal with that? But I know, like, I definitely have one teacher who's keeping an eye out for that. So. And you may have some teachers who feel completely blown away by the technology. Also true. They're all retired. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm retired, but I know there's some, some no, of my fine, younger yeah. colleagues who, and that was one of the things we discussed, was to have sure. a workshop, you know, to get in touch with, with tech to coordinate that with them. But also to provide it's hard copies. <laughs> <for me. laughs> so, Adam, you just mentioned that you think the percentages of students who don't have access to uh, That's internet what, services? That was the number from tech, yeah. And is, is that below 50% that do? Is that, is that what you said? No, just below, they were saying. And is that it's SU or percent. is that Hazen? SU wide. Wow. Oh, yeah. Because I was surprised by that. I, I thought we were much higher than that. Yeah, I thought we were like 80% sure. or something like that. Yeah, 80% I mean, had access or did not have access? Did have did. access. Did. Yeah. There would still be 20% of being, you want to make sure. You know, Everybody. Yeah. So, <laughs> right, but, but it's a so different that magnitude. That would work hand in hand so we could have the virtual uh, resources, but also hard copy that we drop off at central locations like libraries and folks to take if there are no more uh, questions for the uh, principal's incident report, um, I wonder if uh, the board has any questions about the superintendent's uh, incident report, which is in the electronic record. I actually did. Yeah. 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 Ye
will vote. So when it came to the discussion of um, safety meeting plan for drafting an IQ-wide emergency operations plan, I had a parent and also a member of the rescue squad contact me at one point about the possibility of including um, these kits it's called Stop the Bleed in the tourniquets and apparently it's a big deal in the rescue squad and he was concerned that that um, would be investigated for any kind of, I mean, his feeling was these kits should be installed in every classroom, in every school, because, you know, if you had an incident where someone is bleeding, <laughs> um, there have to be people trained and able, and there have to be, you know, means to do that. And that he, according to him, it's, you know, it's, it's a very important component in the emergency um, management. What's it called? The, the rescue squads? What's it? emergency? Medical. Medical technician. No, the people who run out. The people who drive the service. First responders. Yeah, first responders. There you go. So you got I, them. Um, I don't know if that's something that would be on the radar or something that could be. So I'm relaying that from a parent and a member of first responder. Yeah, you can bring that We have members of the rescue squad who are on staff here. Not that I know of. Various, for, for quite a few years we did. And part of their problem is no one. They can't get anyone to be on the rescue squad anymore. There was someone. So that's all I have about it. Are there any more questions uh, for Adam on the superintendent's uh, incidental report? Or Adam, uh, do you wish to uh, highlight uh, part of that report for us? I'm good if there are no questions. <coughs> if there are no questions, let's then uh, move on to uh, the action items. We have to approve the minutes. Do we approve the minutes? We do. We I did. move okay. we approve. Yeah, we do. Yeah, okay. Discussion. All these existence. Like it seems like it's been a long time ago. You may remember at the last meeting, um, the uh, board uh, indicated its informal approval uh, to go ahead with the architect's uh, preliminary study of uh, the renovations and additions uh, to the building. Uh, it was not warned for action then, it's warned uh, for action today. Um, <coughs> What did we do? Because we Tom, approved that, it. We approved it. We approved, we approved uh, it. Said we would formally approve oh, it. Oh, I next see. Meeting. Gotcha. We had a, a bill of particulars. I think I have actually uh, forgotten it to show you again, but it is the uh, uh, architect's uh, estimation of the cost for doing the preliminary feasibility study uh, for those uh, three Tom parts. Tom has had that because. To pass it right. before right. now. Exactly, right. exactly. Um, but it was not. Okay, gotcha. So, uh, is uh, there someone who uh, will move to uh, approve the architect's uh, proposal uh, and cost uh, estimate for the preliminary study of renovations and the addition to the Hazen building and the surrounding area? I would move that we approve the architect's proposal for preliminary study of renovations and addition to the Hazen building. All right. Uh, I should area. clarify that, uh, that that includes the uh, new office uh, complex plan for. Um, that was everything oh, that they are there. Oh, that is the preliminary study. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Okay. The and the surrounding area. Is is there any any discussion? Any further discussion on that? Thank you. Okay. So, hearing none, all those in favor of uh, approving uh, that proposal, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed. And it passes. The next uh, item listed is the fundraiser approval. And I wonder, is that what we talked about earlier with Mr. Whitaker? I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. uh, right? Yeah. 
Okay, so we have basically covered that earlier. Uh, <coughs> Do we, it's an action item. Do so you also need should, a vote on it? We should vote on it. I, I think, if memory serves me, what we did was uh, indicate okay. informally that we thought it was a grand idea um, and, and that Mr. Whitaker got kind of a, a curveball because the AWARE grant uh, covered the things he was interested in using the funds for. And now he's uh, working with uh, administration and faculty, or at least faculty, to find another place for those funds to go. And he promised to uh, come back and tell us uh, where those funds are aimed um, when he finds out. Okay. So um, I think unless the board wants to take some kind of action, we can pass over that now and revisit it later. And I, would, I just want to clarify, like, you guys also gave him permission to find out where the money can start being funneled to, whether exactly. or not it, okay, cool. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And like, did he tell you that he had a person donate, like, he, he had a goal of $1,000 and he had a random person donate to reach that goal, like the full amount? Wow. Right, like some random person online, like donated, like the full amount. Something. Wait, yes. Yeah, oh. yeah. so like, it, 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 it means a lot to him and he doesn't like showing it, but. Yeah. Yes, he's modest, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, the uh, next uh, discussion item is the uh, prospect of a Hazen Building Committee. I was at a meeting a couple of weeks ago with, uh, uh, I think Adam was there, John Smith, the architect, a couple of his uh, uh, assistants, and Todd Della Richier. And we, we talked about the work that has been done so far. Um, and one thing that uh, everybody agreed on uh, as they looked at me, they said there should be a building committee. Uh, because if you recall the uh, timeline to get uh, the big picture to the architect is uh, April 10, not so far away. So. Um, I think that's a good idea, and uh, the job of the uh, building committee, uh, I think, is twofold. One, one is to work with perhaps a, a, a group that's not connected with Hazen um, or the, the OSSU, but community members to form a committee and have some member of, of this board um, sit on that committee and uh, report back to us um, in full about what the uh, community is thinking. Um, that would be one job. The other job would be to try to get the architects what they need soon. And uh, I have had the benefit of uh, having uh, Patrick Kane uh, steer me to Molly Beatty, who, who has done some considerable uh, work uh, with uh, this kind of subject and uh, the uh, learning teaching process at schools. And uh, I'd like to share with you what I learned from her, that basically it's not worth installing or removing a single cinder block anywhere unless it's connected and explainable with reference to the learning process. Um, she says that's yeah. not the way... Hello. Yeah, hello, B. Oh, who did I say, Molly? Yeah. Oh, no one knew who you were talking about. Molly B. I didn't until I realized time. what you were talking right, about. Right, yeah. ago. <laughs> Sorry, Helen. Um, so, uh, I have... Uh, let, let me tell you what I've done uh, so far. I've uh, contacted somebody at, at Harwood. Apparently they have a student-designed cafe that is like the center of gravity and where, where students tend to congregate. So I'm planning on uh, touring Hard, uh, Harwood pretty soon to get a look at that facility and uh, to look at the outcome of what happens when you get students and uh, faculty together to design a building around the learning process. Um, 
I haven't got the date yet. I'll, I'll let you know when I'm invited up in case anybody wants to uh, join me. And that, that uh, tour will be for the purpose of trying to uh, uh, telegraph to the architects what kind of um, what kind of things are, are going to drive the uh, renovations here. Another part is the um, is connected to the grant for the makerspace. Uh, I think it would be useful to touch base with the students and the faculty dealing with the makerspace and ask them if there are any uh, architectural barriers to what they're doing or if we can somehow design the space uh, to make that work uh, easier and, and to be more conducive to using the makerspace. So I'm wondering that maybe the architects uh, by April 10th um, can use some information about something like a student cafe and the point is someplace where the students can come into the school and not be met by a cinder block wall but maybe <laughs> by you know a space where they can go and hang out and, and talk and work and all that good stuff sound good audrey yes all right well, <laughs> you know. where does i'm leaving there's all the good stuff well you still have time to get in on the uh, design the name process. Yes. there you go so i i thought that's important <laughs> the uh uh the maker space uh is going to be important um if we're looking at uh encouraging uh the academy approach um i was hoping uh Maybe somebody on the board, like uh, whose last name, whose name begins with M C, <laughs> might uh, get involved. What? M A C. Is it M A C? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not M. It's right there's there. nobody on the board with it. <laughs> oh, that's right, M A C. So um, the uh, the auditorium uh, could do uh, better than it does. I wonder if. Um, if the students might think if they're going to uh, do productions up at the uh, Art Center in Greensboro, if, if this space can be like a microcosm of the Art Center, you know, not with all the, the great lights and the, the million dollar sound system, but uh, technically kind of reflect what they could find at the uh, Art Center. So when they do go up there to produce a piece, you know, they they're at least have a, a step up on how to uh, control uh, the uh, lighting and the sound and, and the set design and all that. And I think uh, McNeil's probably a, a natural uh, connection there. And I'm hoping um, that uh, maybe uh, uh, McNeil sometime along, you and I, or just you can meet with uh, Mark Considine mm -hmm. and ask him, you know, what what would best serve uh, the students here, uh, the learning process in all aspects of the arts of theater. So, um, does anybody else... And collect his valuable comments. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> New sound system is installed, though. Yeah, and, and you, you need a booth. booth. Being built, Where you know? booth is being built. Right, okay, well that's... I'm know. on top of this, man. I'm okay. <laughs> okay, that's good. This so, is, that's my big thing. Sorry, so anyway. the makerspace, <laughs> a place for uh, students to congregate, uh, maybe something like the cafe at Harvard. Um, uh, the, the auditorium, you know, what else? What else am I missing here in terms of um, uh, places and spaces to convey to the architects uh, that need their attention. Were these are these new things that haven't been in the past design, or are you wanting like anything? Well, right now, um, yeah. I think if you go along with, uh, you might remember Chris Casey a couple of meetings ago said, you know, it's not worth building anything if it's not going to uh, improve the learning process. Mm -hmm. So. Um, with that as the focus, 
I mean, what can we do to... Spaces for faculty together? Uh, right, that's another, that's another, uh, that's another thing that I will, uh, I think, see at Harwood. They have faculty offices, and I think they're by um, uh, section, for example, the, the science section. And I spoke to a couple of teachers around in this building who like the idea of having a homeroom classroom, and I asked them why. And they said, well, um, the students know where they can find me. They can come anytime, and there I am. And we, we set up the class together at the beginning of the year. So we make it our space, in, in, in a way. And uh, I totally understand that. Uh, some teachers don't need that. Um, they just need a workspace, and they will go to the classrooms. I think uh, one arrangement or the other might be more suitable for one uh, uh, area or the other. I don't know. Uh, but that's something we'll find out, uh, is to have a space for the adults to speak together, for the adults and the students to speak together and for the students and the students to speak together. And maybe one, one space can serve one or two or even all three of those. Um, one of the things you notice when you're, I think it's Harwood, you come in and the corridors are wide and there are seating arrangements around and it's just very welcoming. And those yeah. uh, are opportunities for either staff or students to collaborate. You see students say that they're you know, working together. It's just out in the open. Uh -huh. so that's another option. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Can we have some of the lockers? There are 500 lockers in the school. Or uh, lockers that go up to number 500. And there's just a lot of lockers. Uh, that was brought up at that meeting. Really? Yeah. Wow, there's a lot of lockers in there. We used to have 500 students. Yeah. Used to. Yeah. 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 <laughs> used to. Anyway. So um, it would be uh, an advantage to have a, a building committee, but not for the sake of having a committee, but for uh, looking at, at the space and looking at renovations from the point of view of how, how this change will help learning and not just descend into window dressing, really, right, that probably nobody will want or appreciate if, it's, if that's the approach. Um, So, the uh, committee, uh, I wonder what your thoughts are. Uh, do we need uh, a committee on, on this subject? I mean, the architects do want uh, something by uh, April 10th. They're working on a very conservative uh, timeline. I had thought that by the time the, the bond goes out there, uh, all the uh, requests for proposals would have to be out, but that's not the case, I understand. You know, you get the authorization from uh, the voters to go ahead, and then you, and then you build it, and not present it to them as a package. So um, I'm more than uh, willing to uh, do this to look around and to vet um, space ideas to all of you. Uh, but I think it's worthwhile uh, to set up an outside community committee with a board member sitting on there. Um, and also for each of you uh, to talk with the administration and, and the faculty uh, and the students about what their needs are here I certainly don't wish to and cannot uh, handle this uh, all on my own because I'm not going to get it all, I don't think. But I will try my best. Um, so we can either establish a working committee or I think we can um, individually go out and, and seek what it is uh, is needed what would be helpful at Hazen uh, in terms of um, uh, blending learning and architecture. Uh, so what are your thoughts? If you want a committee, I'm going to um, 
ask for some volunteers at, and make a, a committee if you think you'd rather uh, uh, go out and we'll coordinate somehow because the information has to go to the architects uh, and make it more of a, um, an arrangement like that where each, each board member will search out and then come back and, and report what they find. So I'm just trying to imagine <coughs> if I'm citizen A in Hardwick who's interested in my community school and I get invited to be on this committee about potential building changes, how do I link to this, it seems to me like the, my first conversation would be building for what? Right. Right. And how do I link to this other conversation about what we're talking about trying to be when I'm not, when I don't have access to that conversation, right? So there's this whole conversation that's going on right now about what will Hazen become, right? Right. And if we have this group that's the building committee, that's these outside folks who have not been privy to this conversation at the board, right. or any of the internal conversations that are beginning to happen, right. it feels to me like it's going to be a disconnected entity. By April 10th. By, By April 10th. By April 10th. By April 10th. Right. And I mean, uh, surely afterwards, I mean, uh, as the architects are drawing up the plan, you know, we'll have something to say. But, you know, one function of, of the community uh, will be to offer advice on community uses of the school. Um, the, the learning aspect is, is something that really the students and the faculty and the administration know most about and will be relying heavily on them for those. But in terms of uh, the community aspect, uh, I'm not sure that they would welcome, you know, getting into the, but they would be interested in learning about how the renovations are based on learning, that, that they have some justification based on learning, but that they might be able to contribute uh, uh, some useful thoughts about how this fits in, how this project fits in with, uh, you know, Greensboro and Woodbury and Hazen, and I'm speaking specifically of the uh, proposal for the uh, field house um, and what that uh, can be used for uh, the uh, OSSU uh, offices, which would save us a pile of money uh, over the long term, and perhaps uh, draw in some uh, tenants who could help uh, offset uh, the cost of the school or the SU, however you see it. Um, so the outside committee, the yes, there will be a disconnect in terms of um, the connection between uh, the learning and the architecture that supports the learning. Uh, but the outside community uh, is who we need to speak to with respect to uh, how they will integrate. So is, is that the central function that you're envisioning this committee for, is to sort of advise on what aspects of the school might be of interest to serving larger community needs? Is that is that the primary focus of the committee, or is it a larger, when I think of building committee, I'm thinking of all the aspects of it, but it sounds like what you're talking about is just kind of advisory groups to help the planning committee, which is right now this group. Right, well, what I was thinking, I guess I should make that clear, is is an, a, a, an, outs, an outside committee which is the Hardwick, uh, uh, Greensboro, Woodbury community, and having a board member um, uh, sit in with that community to get their ideas, and then reporting back to us uh, as a whole. Now, you know, there's, is there really just a month to accomplish this? Um, you know, th that's a very tight timeline, and, and there, there are some who think, uh, we're not going to make that, but I suggest to you that we can get the broad outlines of the things that are important, like the, the student space, the maker space, the auditorium, and uh, the, 
uses of the uh, proposed office building, those are, that's a tall order in and of itself. And there's already the, the uh, uh, positioning the classrooms in one area for science uh, to kind of build the, the concept of an academy, which is not unanimously appreciated or received by the faculty, I don't think, at this point, although we haven't talked about that yet much with the board uh, and the faculty. Um, so what I would suggest is, is just concentrating on those areas and what I'd, I'd like is some indication whether you think there should be a, a, a formal committee set up or in the interests of time if uh, you can find an area that uh, interests you and um, you know I try to tell David every time I'm in school harassing the faculty asking them about what they think about it uh, shared office space or a home room. Um, it, it's, the conversations are very instructive. So how do you want to do it? Do you want to have a, a committee and a satellite community uh, committee or do you want to go uh, and, and reach out like I suggested, you know, McNeil has some expertise in, and a connection with the Greensboro uh, Arts Center and, and maybe if you talk to uh, uh, get a chance to talk to Mark Considine, you know, it may be useful to, to forge an intentional link uh, between, you know, the drama and the arts program here and the one in, in Greensboro. Just an idea. So how do you want to do it? How do you want to do it? I'm sorry to throw this at you. I think if we don't designate some specific time to the building, time is just going to slip away because right. it's already quarter after nine. It's always like we're jamming this into like these few minutes, and if we don't devote some kind of specific time to the building, then the time is going to slip away, or it's going to be a haphazard. Thing. That's my take on it. And, yeah. and how do we take advantage of the limited uh, time that the, the architects say that they uh, have created for us with a deadline of April 10th? How do we take advantage of? one month. Well, what is it they want to know by April 10th? Um, everything. <laughs> I mean, at the, at the meeting, they, they admitted that they were being kind of conservative. And the sooner they knew what they were working with, the better. And that's the reason for uh, April 10th. There's a lot of progress. I mean, we know what the, the building physically needs to be up to standards. And now, now we're talking really about the program needs. And the program needs should be based on Education. learning and, and how, how the learning is translated into architecture. David, are there opportunities of the, the conversations that are going on with faculty about some of these new um, ideas and directions for education in this building? Are they happening on a regular basis? Um, no, they're not happening on a regular basis because there isn't time for them to happen on a regular basis. So we started a big piece of it last week. We're hopefully continuing this week, but there just isn't time to have those kinds of conversations on a regular basis. So, you know, and, and there isn't a consensus right now about where you know, and we haven't even begun to involve the students in the conversations yet. So, I mean, we have a very limited amount of time with our staff. One hour a week. And those one hour gets divided in a million different ways, so. Yeah, that's at, at the same time. You know, the physical improvements to the building must be made. I mean, so we're kind of locked into this uh, space here. And the way I'm suggesting that we deal with this conundrum is to locate the big uh, ideas that will drive uh, 
the next few decades in the school. And I've suggested a couple to you, a student space somewhat like the cafe, the maker space, uh, the auditorium, and um, And what I'll try to do is to get some idea about the uh, uh, faculty uh, space. So what about inviting some stakeholders to take a trip with you to our work? Um, you know, students, staff, community members? Yeah, uh, totally uh, open to that. Um, I, I think they will be also. What's that? I think, I think they'll, they'll be open to that. Yeah. Um, uh, the tour, by the way, will be by uh, Sally McCarthy. Who, who used to work here in the guidance department, I think, and had a lot to do with setting that up. I mean, something like that can catalyze some interest, and then people are more likely to generate some ideas. Right. You can build that right into the trip. Maybe. Right. Yeah. I, what I've done before is you visit the, the site, and then you stay there as you're generating ideas. You don't come back here. Yeah. Um, so you're off-site, you, you know, juices are flowing, you're just seeing this beautiful campus. Right. Um, I think that'd be ideal, and maybe if another board member or, or some of the, the faculty, uh, on the leadership uh, staff maybe, uh, might be influential and uh, useful um, in, in terms of the overall concept of uh, designing faculty space and faculty student space and that kind of thing. You know, this all sounds uh, so abstract, but um, just getting started with this. Yeah, I guess I'm wondering, is the tail wagging the dog? Like I'm feeling sort of what David's saying about if, you know, over time we're going to transform the way we do education in this building, we're in the place where we're trying to anticipate when those, those two things meet, right? So let's say it takes two or three years to get, you know, faculty and creating whatever it is that, that's going to be created here, will the building accommodate that? And can we anticipate what that might need to look like two or three years from now and that they meet in the middle, and hopefully? Do you, do you know what I'm saying, David? Absolutely. Yeah. Which sort of brings us full circle back to the conversation we had when we thought this was too, too soon. Too soon, right. Yeah, I don't think, I haven't felt we resolved that issue. <clears throat> right. So we kind of have to be kind of anticipating and kind of creative about what we think we might need, to your point about looking at those. But, I mean, there's some obvious places, student places for students to be. That seems obvious at the auditorium. What seems less obvious to me is what do the classroom spaces look like? in this part of the building? What does the cafeteria space look like? Um, and, and that's where Ms. Beatty told me that in her experience and the other experiences... Molly yeah. Beatty. Molly. No, <laughs> Helen. <laughs> Helen, Helen. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Helen. She's an Australian it's okay. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Unless she gets on the net and watches right. this. Um, you know, yeah, but, but I mean, what do you do? You got to make a decision. And if you're going to have the uh, design based on the learning process, why not start organically where it's needed? Makerspace, auditorium, um, you know, the science labs will have to be redone. Uh, and whatever else I said. Uh, teacher space. Teacher space. Thank you, Audrey. I mean, those are the places that need work. And if we're going to do this, you know, not everybody's going to come, come along with this eagerly at the, the drop of the hat. So I think we have to work with uh, the faculty and administration <coughs> that have, uh, that support this. And we can only plan for, for so long. And, and I think we must, we must do something because the building needs work. The building definitely needs work. And it's crazy to do all the work and then tear out walls later and, and redo it. It's an unfortunate situation. We're late in the game. 
and uh, that's the way it is. So if, if we develop an academy structure, like you suggested was being a uh, source of conversation here, we would assume that the auditorium would accommodate the uh, arts academy, some part of an arts academy, the art rooms would have to accommodate another, that the, the science wing would accommodate the STEM academy, that the makerspace would accommodate a different academy, had a humanities academy, where would that happen? If you're a sports academy, obviously we have these new gym spaces. Okay? But I'm thinking, are there some academy ideas that would lack, that wouldn't be able to function in a traditional classroom structure? I guess that's really, I mean, we've got some, you're right, we've got some hot spots that I think could accommodate academies, but is there like a humanities academy that wouldn't be accommodated in any logical space that we can do that, for instance. And I don't know that we know the answer to that. Um, you know, I think we have two issues. We have the issue of the functionality of things like proper heating in the building <laughs> and, and, you know, th those kinds of issues that are one thing. And then we've got this other thing, which has to do with sort of redesign of the space to accommodate what kind of learning environment and goals that we have. And we don't, we don't know what those are yet. There's a bunch of us who have a vision of this place looking really different five or ten years down the road from what it looks like now. And maybe classrooms are not even like the thing anymore. Right? Um, the kids are working in teams on projects in different ways. And, but we, we, don't, we don't have that yet. And I mean, if I were going to make a recommendation right now about what I think this building needs right now, it could be done for five to ten thousand dollars, which would be a complete and total facelift go out and get some beautiful photographs of kids like this big doing interesting things here in our community and put them up everywhere so that when kids walk into this building and put up alongside of it like surround kids in this environment with stuff the artifacts and footprints of kids lives paintings, contraptions, whatever they've done, and, and make this place really feel like a place where kids own it. Mm. That's, what, that's, that's what I would do right now if we had, and leave the rest of it the way it is until we figure out, you know, like, we got a makerspace right there. Until we figure out this makerspace needs to be twice the size, let's let it work in there for now. And, and the other thing I'm just going to throw in here is like, I don't know if anybody knows any bonds that went up in anything but smoke last week around the state, but Lane. most of the big <laughs> ones mm. blew up. Right. And, um, you know, I mean, I think we came back to this, we had put this conversation on hold or, or on delay, yeah. and we had come back to it again with a lot of energy about we need to take advantage of this time because this time is right. The constellations are aligned to make this happen and that's what brought us back to this conversation. But it feels like we've kind of come full circle again in a kind of way. And I'd love to see this building become a positive environment. Like, get us beyond these cinder block walls that just like, Confine us and no natural light anywhere. Oh my gosh. Well, what happens if, let's just say, for the sake of discussion, we decided <coughs> that we upgrade those aspects of the infrastructure that are not compliant with code and that are deficient, which is one of the conversations we had about what the purpose of the bond is. <coughs> um, and I think we, that 
was a price tag of two, three million or something like that. It was it's a little more than that. A little five to six. Five to six. In any case, let us say that we entertain David's idea of let's do a facelift while we continue to discuss it in order to make the building more engaging. How long are we, how long can we delay some of these infrastructure needs? I mean, we've already, we're, we've been out of compliance for so long and it's already been agreed that the state is not going to come in and shut the place down because they won't do that. Um, you know, and there are some obvious issues that um, Todd pointed out with electrical issues and things like that. Maybe those could be identified as, you know, having a need to be addressed urgently. And maybe there are other infrastructure issues that don't require that same level of urgency. Because I, I really have a strong feeling, I agree with David, is like we have not answered the question of what the education will look like in three to four years. And you know, to Helen's point of don't put a single block down until you know what it's for. And we don't know what it's for. So yeah, I think it's premature to say you know, we need to build these things because we don't know what we're building them for. But at the same time, there seem to be issues that we are compelled to address in terms of the structure. And it is unfortunate to think that we would go ahead and address some of those issues and then say, oh, and then in three years we blow out walls and have to, you know, it's possible you can direct the architects to say that we, we need to do these things Currently, is there a way they can be designed so that, I don't know if it's modular or they can be extended so that in, in the future, if we did do this, is there a way to design them cleverly so that we know that if we start adding or changing things that we know, we, when we know three or four years from now, this is how we want to proceed, that they're designed in such a way that those then can be um, extended for the least amount. You know, it's like, no, we don't have to rip out the entire system now. We can add on to the system to meet, and maybe that's not a possibility to you. Well, I, I don't know that it isn't a possibility. I don't know that it isn't either. So, so the other thing that I would add to my little thing about the facelift, like, like the other way to go is to just do the fundamentals, the heating, the electrical, a facelift that is community-based, like have some kind of photography, art, like campaign to get this place filled with stuff. And then get a few vans so we can go places. I mean, I think if we had the opportunity to move kids to other places instead of thinking like it needs to be a building, right? What an incredible advantage that would be to be able to move our population, you know, so that some project that wants to go do this can go do that. And um, to me, that would be a much more innovative thing than, you know. And we'll have that next year. Well, and I think that's going back to a conversation we had a couple months ago where it's like you can buy a new building but you can't buy new programs and equipment. And what does that also look like? Where it's like, you know, okay, you get new music classrooms, that means the auditorium is freed up to actually be a performance space, but like you can have dance classes in there. Are you going to pay for the instructor? Is that going to be an actual program? Like you can dream of all these things, but it's harder to implement them and especially find the channels to implement them outside of a bond vote. So. So maybe the question is, what it needs to be in this building we can't fulfill outside of this building? Because what you're suggesting is we should take education out into the community, and that's where we should be putting our funding. I think that's part of it. Right. That's part of it. But like I think of, look at the weight room, for instance. I think that proposal for a new weight room is probably not an unreasonable 
proposal. No, it's a good one. Right? And the, I mean, I've seen that's a dismal space. Wait rooms in prisons than in, in <laughs> school. So, I mean, I think if we really looked at what are the things that we really do need, and then what are the ways in which you, you envision education, because in some ways you're right, if you're going to take students out every day to do projects out and about, they're not going to be here anyway. The space that's already here is sufficient. And you're right, it has to have a facelift. We have to get more light into the school, we need to get more joy into the school, we need to get whatever it is. I agree with you. I'm just looking for you, man. Yeah. Get rid of the ratty rugs. <laughs> they're all like water. Uh, they're all broken over there. They're warped. Don't even get I mean, but what those are that is millions of dollars no, that the uh, community is going to balk at. Those are all sort of reasonable things that would make people feel a little bit differently. And, uh, and I will say yeah. I did hear some comments at town meeting. I was talking to people, and um, I think you would find. At least in Greensboro, taxpayers balking at the idea of a $20 million bond. I mean, I could not explain to voters in Greensboro why you had to put five, six million bucks into another big com community space that, you know, quite honestly, people in Greensboro are not inclined to drive down here to use a big gymnasium for anything. They just converted the gym at the elementary school into like a pickleball court because they like to go, they pickleball, but they they don't want to drive to Hardwick to do that. You know, it's a good thing for people in Greensboro on a winter's night because it's close and it's available and it's doable. And I, so, you know, it's a, a grand vision to have this big multi-purpose room for all sorts of different things that the community at large could have, but then who is the community at large? And if it's the people you're asking to pay for, you better make sure that you know they feel that that's an important thing for them to have. And just you know, a few conversations I had at town meeting, it was like, I don't think there would be any problem. I think, you know, the taxpayers in Greensboro seem to be very supportive of education and what, you know, you say that if, if it's a weight room or infrastructure or anything else like that, yes, they, they're there, but you get to the, you know, if you are going to try and sell that grander vision of education, then it's like, okay, what does the education look like? They want to know what the education is they're supporting. What are you doing to, su what, what does that building do to support the education? What is the education? And if I can't say, you know, this is the vision of education we have arrived at, I can't sell any of it. Right. And, you know, if we're really talking about some kind of integration, collaboration with the community, this building is empty. Every single night, this, this place is filled with all kinds of spaces that could be used by the community if we wanted to go in that direction and open it up if there were a need there. And so what are we hearing from the community about what the need, where the need is? We've been approached and almost begged by Head Start right. to like take Head Start right. in to the, and there's a start to trying to get some like beyond our box here and have this place become some kind of a community center where things go on beyond what happens here. Um, and all of that can happen within the confines of what we already have, or we focus on that somehow. How can we better accommodate that program to be here? Right. I totally agree with that. Right. 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 Our grounds are set up well for it. So anyways, like we've just opened this conversation all up and it's part of the process. Can we I know we need to schedule these extra meetings and have those meeting, but can we possibly 
open a meeting up and Dad, just will we just talk about the building and what we want to do? Because we have these rushed conversations and we don't ever have a kind of come to Resolution. Yeah, and I think it's really unfair it's to go to you because you've been doing so much of this work. But it would be great if we could open a meeting and ask faculty to come and ask the teachers to come and really sit down and have this listening and, and sharing ideas because I like the idea of get a bond and buy five bands and you know, put the money there and really have small I mean, we are getting the buses, but we're also, I'm hearing from the elementary is that they all think they're getting, be using these buses all the time. <laughs> so it's like, oh, well, clearly it's a good idea. We need, we need more transportation. Transportation, um, transportation might be better. But I also think we need, to, we need to spruce this place up. It's Hire the queer eye boys. Yes, yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> it's, visually, it's impoverished. Yes. And it wouldn't take a lot to change that. It would take mobilizing our youth community and say, let's go to town here, folks, and let's, I mean, one of the ways that I've seen it done in the former school that I worked at, we had a photo contest, and we the kids went out for the photography class, and anyone who wanted to participate, and we took a million photographs, and then we had conversations about, what does this one say, what does that one say, and we got, 50 of them that we loved and blew them up and put them on the wall. And when you walk in as a kid in the school, you go, wow, there's me. I live here. I belong here. I'm part of this. And then you, add, you build onto that with all kinds of other things that people have. Um, and it doesn't cost a lot of money, but it, it builds community at the same time you're trying to build the space that you live in. I think the historical societies have a number of photographs. It would be nice things that would help draw some of the some folks who've been around here forever into the building also. Yeah, that'd be good for the kids. Um, Multi-generational thing. I just want to speak really quickly before I go. Um, I love the idea of the community spaces being open to the public. The only thing is that you have to think about who you're going to pay to manage those spaces. Right. Um, like the auditorium, you need to hire a full-time tech person who understands the system. That doesn't exist at the moment. It's usually led to the IT guys who are more computers, not system, not lighting and, and stuff. Um, and it had always been kind of joked that I would get a little stipend for doing it, but it never actually came to um, fruition. I'm a little salty about that, um, but like thinking well, we're because you're not staying here long enough. You have to stay here about five. That was a joke years. last year. <laughs> just saying, plenty of time. Um, but like, especially with the new sound system, and we are building a booth. There are walls up. It's really oh, it's so sweet. Anyway, um, you get there's a bigger thing where it's like, who are you going to pay to manage the space? Are you going to train people to manage the space with the gym? Like, who actually has control over that? Who takes priority in situations? Because um, I know like. There was a system in place where the auditorium could be like <coughs> used by community members, but it would have to be okayed by both the music department and drama club, um, specifically Constantine, to deal with the tech stuff. And that has kind of gone to the wayside in the in the new wave of guidance, just on on accident, um, and stuff like that really needs to be settled, especially if you're going to be opening the space up to the community members. Like, what is the expectation, and who gets to take priority in situations? Um, that's all. I'm going to head out. It's really late. Bye. Have a good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Thank Thanks. 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 We're losing people like flies here. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so we have to vote on stuff like consent agendas. And yeah. Oh, well, then maybe uh, it's a good time for me to, to wrap have? it up here. Yeah. Um, this is like being in a circus and having a lot of plates that are rolling. And you got to move the stakes to keep the plates rolling. Well, some of those plates are the financial plates. I mean, you go to a bond once, and you go to a bond twice, you're going to have a, a less favorable. Uh, so the incentive there is to do it now. Um, the the other thing is is the time. The, the, the plate that's spinning the most wildliest is the time we have to do this. And uh, the other plate is well, you know. There are things, I think, that everyone will agree this place needs. It needs a place for the students to congregate. Maybe it needs wider halls. Somebody mentioned um, uh, 
the, the idea of uh, a modular uh, approach. Well, you know, instead of having concrete walls, um, why not have a, Todd was mentioning this, this very odd kind of wall, uh, some kind of uh, drywall and something that, that might be easier to replace if the education, uh, the vision for education changes. Now, as far as I understand from talking with administration faculty, there is not one answer to what, what education is going to look like. It's going to constantly keep changing. So, um, <coughs> and maybe, maybe in a short time. So what I, to summarize, you know, what I'm going to intend to do here is to run the gauntlet here with all these questions, good questions, and, you know, come up with something uh, for the, the board uh, to consider, if that's what you want me to do. And then you can take it apart or, or knock out different parts. But what I expect to do is to come back to you and uh, maybe rank uh, what we need. Uh, we need a place for students to congregate. We need a places for the adults to talk together uh, and to talk with the students. Um, those kinds of things I think we need. It's a rather abstract concept, but they've done the work in Harwood to create a, a space like that. So I think it's, if, if I come back to this board, I would say, you know, we need to ask the architects um, to make room for a place like the, the cafe in Hardwick, uh, in the Harwood, and then you know, we have to actually get the students in on telling the architects how it's going to be designed and the faculty. And the same thing with um, uh, faculty offices or, or space. You know, can we have both homerooms and, and, and other spaces? Um, and we want one bond out of here because John Smith says it's going to be pretty difficult to go back and get another bond, or more expensive at least. It, it may not be so difficult technically, but it will be more costly. So if, if you approve, I mean, that's what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll try to pick the most Im important parts. I'm going to interview as many teachers as I can and as many students as I, ha I can. Happily, we have uh, the information from the journalism students. Uh, I have a whole list of ideas that I came up with and uh, come at it. And nobody, nobody will be satisfied because there's going to be things left open. Yet, I think we don't have a choice. We have to move. And under these conditions, the movement should be organic should be what we need now and leave for the future what we can leave for the future, but operate in a way and think about it in a way that will make this place more flexible for future changes and not just, you know, when the next generation of board members come in here, but the generation after that. Yeah, I think flexibility is your key element. Well, all right, so, you know, as a practical matter, what I'll do is I'll talk with Todd, and, you know, he, he knows something about walls and building walls. And um, where I worked at the offices with the state, that's how kind of offices were built. And when they were uh, eliminated or expanded, you know, it was just snaking cables through the wall, mostly, and insulation where it was needed. And I'll ask him about, um, installing more windows so we have a natural light here. That's kind of the fa facelift approach to make the, uh, the building a little happier uh, in terms of uh, connection with the outside world and not staring at cinder block walls uh, all the time. So that's what I propose to do. I mean, you can, I'll present something, you can like all of it, part of it, or none of it, but we gotta do something. We gotta do something. The rooms from here through the whole middle school are all sheetrock on aluminum girders because it was from here all the way through the middle school area was open. 
when the building opened in 1970. For the Olympic-sized swimming pool. <laughs> right. Uh, and there was a proposal skating room. that, like Boston Garden, can be used for ice hockey and for basketball, that there be a floor that they could take in and out. And there were some people who said it only cost $10,000 to do that. They didn't understand it was 10000 just to change it over to put the wooden floor down over the ice arena. Every time you did that? Every time. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think? I mean, what I'm doing now is, is I'm, I'm talking to teachers, I'm talking to administration, Good. I'm visiting Harwood, and, you know, I'm kind of a complete outsider here, folks, but, but I think that may be a useful perspective in some ways. You know. So, I'll come back with, with ideas, and, and for sure they're going to be modified. But we got to get a bond. We have a timeline, and we're in a we're in a tough situation. We're in a tough situation, and we just have to make the best of it. The next the next board meeting is very, very close to April tenth, right? April thirteenth, right after April. 10th. Oh, well, then we're all set. <laughs> the decision will have so been just made. Figure it out. <laughs> right. do it, whatever you want. I, I, I just, it doesn't feel realistic to me. No, and, and no, it's not. Th that's not the, you're not the first person to, to say that. But I got to do something. We have to do something. And, and you know, I'll, I'll make the suggestion. And getting it 100% right is way not realistic. But doing it, you know, so, in stages, maybe. So is what you're thinking that we can't get the money to upgrade this building so that it has functioning systems in it, and two years later or sometime down the road when we have a really clear sense of having developed a great vision for what we want this place to be, to go back at that point and then get some more money to make this place serve that function? Is that what you're saying? Cause well, it, it's, that would be great if, if we knew that was going to happen. But is, it, is that going to happen in two years? I don't know. If it does, can we create the, the conditions for that decision to be implemented in two years without going back? Now, there's other bond work happening here. Did, did Hardwick vote for another bond for a, a fire truck this year? Not yet. Not yet. That's coming. Uh, Crassberry has a, a bunch of bond work to do up there. So there's going to be a huge bond load right. on this neck of the woods. Um, and I think it would be a little tougher <coughs> to go back and get a bond again um, in this climate. Uh, I'm sorry I don't have a, a fuller list of, of uh, bond requests that, that are coming. Library. The library? The library, the library is going to be a You know, they may not all be met, but, you know, the fire department, I think people will go for a bond from the fire department. But Craftsbury yeah, needs some. But Craftsbury is not part of right. this. Craftsbury is pays it. I mean, my feeling That's right. is, so, I mean, we have to do something about some of the physical infrastructure of the building. But say we did that, say we did the facelift renovations, which would make a phenomenal difference here, yeah. right? Maybe we decide we don't need to do a huge bond. I mean, that's yeah. entirely possible. If we can't explain and a big why bond we're doing is it, is going to be met with real resistance. If we can't explain totally what the bond is for, totally, it'll never. So, I and, agree. And maybe, and if instead we progress, like for instance, I've been thinking a lot about this hard start issue, right? Why not instead really try to say, where is the need here? How do we be responded to the need? How do we make this huge building and these grounds, which are way underutilized? better serve the community. We can start by better serving the youngest people in the community. Daycare issue is a huge issue for families. What if we instead we not try to remake the whole universe of Hazen, but do some things and just do them well? 
and that alone would make a big difference. It really would. Every time I come to this library, I think, why is there so little sign of the students in this library? Tell me, why, right? That's a big issue. But this library would be a phenomenally different place, sure, if the carpets were changed, but sure, if there was the sign of the students here. I say, maybe we're going after the wrong thing here. Maybe we should instead refocus what we're doing. And to me, that might make more sense what David's suggesting here. And a much smaller bond issue, it's the 50-year anniversary. It's not unreasonable to say, hey, it's been 50 years. We need to replace the carpets. We need to deal with some of the wiring. That's going to be met with far less resistance because it makes sense, as opposed to saying, give us $20 million to redo the entire building. I'm just thinking on a practical level here. Mm -hmm. What is it we're trying to achieve? We're trying to come up with this goal that we don't even know what the goal is yet. We're overstretching, really. And, yeah, Mike. I think we have a few things. I think there's complete agreement that we need to meet codes. That is, the electrical and the plumbing and the heating. Right. Um, that type of work. Uh, what was it, 5.6 million or something like that? Something like that. Just to bring us to standards, some of which we were at and have fallen out, some of which are, we have an antique heating system with uh, pneumatic tubing running throughout this building that springs leaks, right. that does not heat efficiently anymore, and it was the proper way to do it in 1969 when they built the building, right. but it isn't today. So we have that. We then have some things that will enhance the educational outcomes. That is, additional practice space, a new weight room. Which there wasn't a weight room originally. The weight room was pushed into a storage area that does not, never did meet code. Um, so we have the fundamental, the infrastructure piece. We, when they opened the building, the breezeway between here and the gymnasium was just on pillars. And even in the winter, you would walk from a heated area to another heated area with wind and sleet blowing through there. Uh, they put up walls um, and have done a variety of things to them over the last 50 years. But, and then we have the let's dream pieces. Should we on this campus, because we've got 100 acres and we've signed some of it over to, or we've signed the use over to GMTCC to use as a laboratory for the forestry program. Um, there was talk a few years ago of putting in a horticulture program here, but they are expanding an, an ag program over in Cambridge area. So that doesn't seem a likelihood at this point, but there's talk about a variety of things there. But we have the dream pieces using some of the rest of this area possibly using uh, space to build a superintendent's or a central office complex. If the three elementary schools are going to be combined into one or two, there may be an extra building around, though I doubt that the superintendency would like to be in one of the outlying towns. But, I, you know, there's some potential there. There is some space that's potentially freed up because we have a shrinking population, both at the high, high school and the feeding schools area. But we have those three things. We have the fundamentals that I think there's universal agreement. We think we can sell easily. There's the education component that we do need to get a good story about so we can say, yes, this is what results if we uh, upgrade this. This is what results if we add this to the educational outcomes. I see the decision, do we ask for those two things or do we ask for all three? And if we're going to ask for all three, we're going to expect probably that one of them doesn't survive. Um, I don't know if that's true if we ask for two. We've got to have a good story to go with it. The, uh, when you're trying to get something done, and this is putting on political spectacles rather than educational spectacles. You may need to give a variety of options to people and expect that they'll choose the right ones. Exactly. And, and they will choose in the end. Well, 
in a democracy, we define what they choose as the right ones. Well, that's true, too. That's true, too. Sometimes that's difficult. Sorry. Well, um, I was trying to wrap this up 20 minutes ago, but the conversation keeps getting better and better. Um, I would be happy to volunteer to be on the building committee, however. I'm needing to go hiking for two months, <laughs> and I'm not going to be here, and I'm not going to stay to do that. And you I won't tell you a commute. Okay. <laughs> He's going out of the woods, I, so he doesn't have to worry about all that stuff. If we run into that, then I'll be home. <laughs> and, uh, I'll probably not be in good condition. Um, I, I, I hear you loud and clear. Um, you've um, uh, clarified and, 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 and buttressed uh, the various opinions I've heard before, but uh, I have to tell you, I'm still bound and determined Good. to come up and, and give you choices on what to do, and you can accept none of them, or some of them, or you can change them, uh, and, and do whatever. But uh, I feel impelled uh, to do something now. I just don't want to do something stupid and do something that's wasteful and doesn't help anything anywhere. So I don't know. What I'll do is, is I'll come up with a lot of, with enough scenarios, I think, and just try to, you know, shoot the gap between when the architects need to do something and when they don't. And, and I think I'm doing that because I feel impelled because of what John Smith told me about the financial circumstances of getting something like this, uh, for what Todd told me about getting the building done, and you know discussions with faculty and staff about you know the the joys of uh, looking at cinder block, <laughs> you know, and, and how maybe that can change with with some facelift. Call it you know. Five by ten photographs or, or carving out a place, uh, student designed, uh, at least aided with student design, um, for a place to congregate. So they're not lurking in the halls, and you know, they're all lurking in one place <laughs> where they can be supervised if necessary, right? So if if you approve of that, I I will try to take that on and get something. Uh, tangible and not too outrageous for you. Okay. Marvelous. That All right. Nice <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. It just feels like get going. All right. Um, we have the uh, consent agenda on the next. Unless anyone wants to give me a parting shot of advice here. No. Been at this for four hours now. I think we should move on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, what is the board's pleasure? If anyone's watching anymore. Wake up! <laughs> Hello, hardware! I know there's no crazy people out there still watching. <laughs> Go to bed. In another four minutes we're going to be longer. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Another 40 minutes will be longer than the movie The Irishman. <laughs> I will be asleep. And just in as excited. Right. The next item is the consent agenda. Uh, what is the board's pleasure with respect to approval of the monthly uh, fi financial <coughs> narrative with the budget adjustments, with the uh, vouchers, and with the. No treasures report. There's no treasures report. I keep unsuccessfully trying to strike that from the agenda. I'll try better next time. Um, <laughs> So, oh, God. so what, what is your pleasure with respect to the uh, consent agenda? Is there a motion to uh, move the consent agenda? I move that we accept the consent agenda. Is, uh, is there any discussion? Is there the vouchers and treasures? No, we have no treasure report. Yes, we have no treasure report. Uh, McNeil, you moved it? Yes, sir. And what's, what's the uh, board's pleasure? All those, any further discussion on that? All those in favor of uh, the consent agenda, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, and the consent agenda passes. Uh, Adam has 
fled, <laughs> um, which any reasonable person would have done about an hour ago. So I think we'll push off the executive session for personnel for uh, later. So we have to vote for um, yes. Is it your we can't push that off. It is my contract. Yeah. We need to go to an executive session and we're going to start talking about it. Yeah. So I think we should let we go Is that the last thing? It's the last thing. Uh, no, we, we and we vote. might still have to talk, vote. but not with you present necessarily, if you don't want to. Right. So, about the, uh, so we should probably matter. go into executive That's session if there's I, nothing else to do, and then we can figure out where we want to go with this conversation. At least I want to put on the table what the content of it is. All right. So I move that we go into executive section to include David. Okay. Um, all those in favor of going into executive session, say I'll aye. I'll allow you to get out of here. And my trooper. That'll <laughs>